Welcome to another episode of Airquit Whiskey Studies, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the history of Deanston Distillery and do a review of the Deanston Virgin Oak. Like a virgin, touch for the very first time. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. But uh, <laughs> for whatever reason, the song by Madonna pops in my head uh, whenever I see this label. Now, uh, I have very, very, very low expectations coming into this because it's a non-age statement, which means it's gonna be young, virgin oak. I figured, oh, it's probably gonna have a lot of uh, green notes and really, really youthful. And the price, what do you see the price? When I saw the, the price on this, that even sets the bar lower. Not expecting a whole lot from this whiskey. But before we get into this, let me tell you about the history of Deanston Distillery. Deanston Distillery, a former cotton mill, is located on the banks of the River Teeth, eight miles from the historic town of Sterling, at the gateway to the dramatic Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park. In 1785, Deanston Mill was established on the River Teeth. In 1964, Brody Hepburn bought and converted the former cotton mill, creating Deanston Distillery Company Limited, a subsidiary of James Finlay Company Limited. Hepburn also ran Tullibarden Distillery. Production started at Deanston Distillery on October 1966. In 1971, the distillery's first single malt was released under the name Old Bannockburn. In 1972, the distillery was sold to Invergorn Distillers Holdings Limited. In 1974, the first single malt bearing the name Deanston was released. In 1982, the distillery closed while owned by Invergorn Distillers Holdings Limited. In 1990, the distillery was sold for 2.1 million pounds to and reopened by Byrne Stewart and Company from Glasgow. In 1991, Deanston Distillery resumed production. In 1999, CL Financial bought 18% of the stakes of Byrne Stewart and Company. In 2002, CL Financial bought the remainder of the stakes of Byrne Stewart and Company. In 2006, the Deanston 30-year-old was released. In 2009, Deanston 12-year-old was relaunched. In 2010, the Deanston Virgin Oak was released. In 2012, the Deanston Distillery Visitor Center was opened. In 2013, Byrne Stewart & Company is acquired by South African Distel for 160 million pounds. In 2015, the Deanston 18-year-old was released. In 2016, the Deanston Organic was re-released. In 2017, the Deanston 40-year-old and Vintage 2008 were released. In 2018, the Deanston 10-year-old Bordeaux finish was released for duty-free. In 2019, the Deanston 1997 Palo Cotado finish and the 2006 Cream Sherry finish and the 2012 Beer Cast finish were released. The Deanston Virgin Oak Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It has no age statement. It was Asian X bourbon and Virgin Oak cast. It is nacho filtered, has natural color, Spotted at 46.3% alcohol by volume and sells for about $39 on average. Alrighty, so look at the color on this. It's nacho filtered, no added color. It's got plenty of color to it, so that's all from the oak. So even if it is youthful, it's got some good extraction from the oak to get this kind of color. On the nose, if you're smelling blind, the first thing that pops in your head is, oh, this smells like a bourbon. It smells like a bourbon. It is very cask forward in its character. Caramel, butterscotch, vanilla. Loads of cinnamon, nutmeg, baking spices. Maybe some apples, some pear. Apple pie, really. It's more on the apple pie note than just apples. And some nice floral notes on the palate. 
very distinctive maltiness, but if you're a bourbon fan, and all the cast characteristics of a whiskey, of a bourbon, are in this. Very, the vanilla, the caramel, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the, the baking spices, right? The difference is there's no corn notes. It doesn't have caramel corn or butter corn or any kind of corn. By the way, it does seem to have a buttery note to it, but no corn note, note to it. And on the back end, that very distinctive multi character to it. I really, really, really like this whiskey. Any expectations, any prejudice, any thought I had about this whiskey going into it is completely, completely gone. It has a nice development. Up front, apple pie, cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg. There's a little bit of uh, a barrel oak spice bite. Again, it's not alcohol bite like some youthful whiskey is going to have um, or a unmatured spirit bite like a lot of young whiskeys can have. It is a uh, baking spice bite, that the tingle of spice notes. And the finish on this is really, 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 really long. Completely blew my mind. Um, what I'm gonna give it in terms of score, I'm gonna go 89 points, 89 points. The only thing it would need really to get me into 90 or higher is more depth, breadth, and maybe a little bit of different of uh, a mouthfeel. Uh, as I'm talking right now, I'm still tasting a really long barrel finished spice, a really, really uh, excellent whiskey. I gotta say, if you look out there, the prices of scotches these days, this is probably on my list of a top 10 for uh, high quality price uh, scotch whiskeys. In fact, I'm almost at a point where I gotta say, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't post this video because what's gonna happen is it, it becomes popular and the word gets out, people are buying it. It'll be harder to find and prices will go up and the, the flippers and, and all that bullshit, right? This is an absolute killer whiskey. If you see it, if you like a bourbon cask whiskey, if you like the characteristics of a bourbon and you're looking for high quality scotch, that's not gonna break the bank. I mean, it's gonna be under 50 bucks. Uh, this is an absolute uh, must buy, absolutely killer whiskey. All right, uh, if you like watching my videos but you've not yet subscribed, please ring the bell and subscribe. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.